Music and Monsters. You are watching Music and Monsters. Music and Monsters, the art of Jace Whitman. Please visit www.musicandmonsters.com. <laughs> wanted to be a drummer but I, we were living me and my dad were living in an apartment complex at the time oh over on uh in, in uh, largemont near mm-hmm. cory in cory's neighborhood yeah and um obviously i couldn't have drums in an apartment so thank you have you ever thought about trying drums now i can honestly say though since that initial feeling of wanting to play drums as a teenager I've never had it again, yeah, because it looks like too much work. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Plus, um, you don't have to live on your girlfriend's couch. Well, yeah, that too. And then lugging around a full <laughs> set. <laughs> that too, you know, just the, the... Or wearing just a t-shirt and shorts for your entire life. <laughs> like someone we know. So oh, he's yeah. playing tonight. Oh, wait, actually. wait, wait a second. Yeah, he's playing tonight? And Fox News. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that sucks. I wish we would have... Uh, you could. So. Yeah. Oh, they they haven't even started playing yet. Not it's yet. only eight o'clock. I have to work tomorrow. Yeah, it's not a problem. Yeah. Uh, do you know what time they start? No. Nope. Okay. I think they're headlining though. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Forget that. Yeah, yeah. What's the name of that band? Uh, nice monster. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He was supposed to tell me when they were gonna play this month too. I just happened to see it on Facebook. Yeah. Wow. Okay, question number two. Alright. What's your favorite horror movie? Hmm. Oh, that's a tough one. Just what it up, no. It has to be The Thing. Yeah, I would have to John say The thing. thing. John Carpenter's The Thing. Why? Just because I love the characters in that movie. Kurt Russell obviously is a standout, but uh, also, what's his name? Um, uh, not him. Uh, <laughs> the uptight Keith David. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love his role in that movie. <laughs> I'd say those are the two standout performances for me. <laughs> it's funny thinking about him. Have you seen the theories? Uh, there's like fan theories about the ending of the thing Mm-mm. because apparently yes thank you. McCree has breath vapor and his eyes are reflecting light yeah and Keith David's character not really breath vapor and his eyes are not reflecting light yeah so the theory is that Keith David's character is the thing really wow Nothing's been confirmed, but it's really interesting after you hear it. And then, so next time you watch it, watch that Okay. And that thing of like, I don't think either one has any surprises. So yeah. Maybe they do. <laughs> also, either way, it doesn't matter because if the thing gets in, it's going to freeze anyway. That's true. Why do you think they never made a sequel to the thing? Because it made no money. Oh, really? I didn't realize that. Perfect as it is. And that yeah. movie got critically roasted. Really? Uh, that movie came out on the same day as Blade Runner. And- so John Carpenter, he lived through that though. He did. Uh, and so his thing, which is hilarious, and John Carpenter is hilarious if you've ever seen him. Yeah. 
they ask about that. How does it feel to have a movie that's considered a classic now that was just roasted when you came out? It's like, I never made any money off of it. Yeah. That's just amazing. You know, we look at that movie and think that this is it's a great... It's a masterpiece. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nothing short it of that. It can't be Wow. Something like, about the isolation of being out in the cold and isolated. Yeah, and it's just, music. yeah, oh yeah, definitely the music. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That thing with Carmen, like, gum, gum. he's so smart, yeah. Also, that's the first one where we brought in someone from the outside. Yeah. Music oh, really? He did a lot of the music, but he brought in uh, any more he, Oh, okay. Could from the, the spaghetti westerns. Gotcha, yeah. yeah. And look at that main thing that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The heartbeat. Yeah. That's true. Which sounds like something Carpenter would have done. Yeah. I just recently watched They Live, and you know that's still one of my favorites mm-hmm. because, uh, and I can guess that he didn't make a lot of money on that, but I don't he know. Didn't. Okay. Uh, they Live. So my theory of that is that movie would have just killed the box office. Yeah. If Kurt Russell had played that part. Oh, yeah, yeah. Think about it. Roddy Piper and... Roddy Piper is a good performer. Yeah. But not a great actor. Yeah. He didn't have a following. Yeah. He, he had a wrestling. wrestling following, but... Yeah. He is funny as hell on It's Always Sunny. Have you seen him on It's Always Sunny? No, no. He's yeah. still alive? No. Oh, okay. Oh, that's... Uh, yeah. But he was hilarious on that. Really? Huh? He was... He was a beast in they live. I mean, as far as fitness and... Um, and I thought he did a great job, in spite of what anybody else may have thought. I mean, that that, right. that with David Keith combined with David Keith, I thought that was a great um, duo. Yep. Also, the fact of like it's widely recognized that that Ali fight scene mm-hmm. in They Live is the best fight scene in any movie. Really? And it is because they are going off on each other. I was surprised to see it go as long as it did. Every time I watch that movie, I'm surprised to see it going as long. <laughs> <laughs> as it does. Shots. Uh, as your interest in horror movies, do you think it's ever influenced your songwriting? Oh, that's a good question. Hmm, that's a tough one. I don't think so. I, that's uh, to be honest with you, no, I don't think it has yet. Um. Not to say that it won't in the future, but I think my biggest influence as far as recently, I, think, I feel like I'm entering a new phase. And the, the aspect of outer space has always interested me. That's why I love delay pedals. I mean, I love anything that sounds like outer space. And I think that's where I see myself transitioning to right now. The first few songs, that first CD, I wrote it. And then I stopped for two years straight. And this goes to what Corey was telling me, you know, one of his biggest mistakes is having these breaks in your songwriting. Mm-hmm. And I took a, like, I, I worked as hard as I could for those 18 months and I took, I just stopped after that because, because I thought the music would do some work for me as far as the leg. It had its leg, so let's see what it does. It doesn't. Yeah, yeah, I learned that hard, the hard way. Oh. Okay, thank you. But uh, but I, I'm hoping to be more consistent and not not um, not falter again. Just be able to consistently write, just because I love writing now and, and I love the, um, the autonomy and I love just being able to um, you know create the whole vision myself. With you know short of you know having a little bit of input from the engineer and the, um, who also is functions as somewhat of a producer and my second ear, my blind spot. So, question four. If you could write a song with any living musician, yeah. who would it be? First person, only person that comes to mind is Obviously, um, Sting. That was my thought. Yeah, yeah. I still, to me, he's like the. Um, yeah. He's a monster. Yeah, he's still the pinnacle the of best way. you know uh, songwriting for me. It's funny listening to his stuff now. Yeah. Like going back to this stuff, the early police stuff. Yeah. Like, 
that he was singing, playing bass. Yeah. And singing reggae. Yeah. And playing those badass bass lines. Oh yeah. yeah. I know. In 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 reality, I mean, I listen to those bass lines. None of them are like technically virtual. Austin. He's the reason, or he's the shining star of. You don't need to. Be. Exactly. I mean, he's like the textbook example. Of, you just need to be tasteful or find something that works. Look at walking on the moon. Yeah. Oh yeah. For <laughs> real. <laughs> yeah, that's that summarizes it right. There. <laughs> I mean, he's just inventive. In, in, uh, in, in, um, you know. And had some badass comrades. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, I admit Sting is, you know, great with them or without them. But, but yeah, at the same time, he was with them. Yeah, they, they definitely were weren't to be um, dismissed at, by any means. I mean, they completed him at that time. You know? mm. We appreciate Tom Petty more. Mm-hmm. In what way? Record producers desperately wanted him to just be Tom Petty. Yeah. Not have a band, but yeah. just be. Prince, just be Michael Jackson, just yeah. be that. He was like, no, I'm not without my band. Wow. I'm not going to Hollywood, I'm not doing any of that without my band. Wow. He's right. Because it was Tom Petty's heartbreak all the way through. That's, I That's think. That's been a running joke because she, she's seen him live. Yeah. And then he would say, I'm Tom Petty, and these are the heartbreakers. Yeah. These are the heartbreakers, and the crowd goes wild. Ah, to me, so I mean, that's her family. I mean, it, 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 when you stick your neck out like that to kind of preserve that type of um, family and camaraderie, I think that's that just shows something it's more than wonderful. That, that all those dudes yeah. are world class status now. Yeah, like they're all set for life because he he included them in everything. So Tom Petty made his money. And then some had more than he could ever do. He made sure all of his guys got set up. That's, well, like, let's put it this way: you. Elton John could go on tour and be like, I like to be Elton John of the Heartbreakers for this tour. Yeah. I mean, if they do it, yeah. and they don't need to because they also made money because Tom Petty didn't afford it. Yeah. Right? They were a yeah. team. Um, but like, everybody's doing that with the Revolution. Oh man! Ouch! Well, well, wait well, a second. I'm just no. Yeah. Oh, yes, thank you. Is there anything else? Are you okay? We're good. Thank you. No. Nobody's going, you know what I mean? Like, uh, Elton John would not be like, you know what, I like to go into the revolution. Yeah. Elton and the revolution, I would go see that shit. Of course you would. Elton and the revolution. But it's not because they're world-class musicians that... That's true. You know. Uh, I love them, but they are not that. Okay. Who would you say falls short of? Obviously, Bobby Z. I realize I, that would be my guess. I don't want to call out names, but he wasn't even with it when we saw him. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, he was. Was he? Mm-hmm. Bobby Z is much more solid than you think. Yeah. I've got recordings, of, like live recordings of Prince at the very early stages. Yes. Uh, when Bobby Z and Dez were in the band. Mm-hmm. And Bobby Z didn't have any electronics and held it down. Really? Uh-huh. Okay. Prince got into his Lindra with yes. electronic with drum machine. Bobby Z had to learn how to play with a drum machine. That's really hard. Oh yeah. You gotta have super time. Yeah. And so if you watch a lot of the Revolution era stuff when Prince was still with him, uh-huh. you see Bobby is playing just cymbals. He's accenting the drum machine and doing fills, electronic yeah. fills. He's pretty good. Okay. I thought the same thing for a long time. <clears throat> Who would you say fell short of being world class <laughs> within that ensemble? They were a rudderless ship. Oh, without Prince? They just didn't, didn't have a soul. Without Prince, all of them fell short. Yeah. Well, with one exception, two exceptions. Dr. Fink is still Dr. Fink. You can't, you can't take anything away from him. Yeah. That dude is bad, and Lisa is bad. So, of course, I'm biased towards the kid. Not Wendy, but Lisa. Wendy is bad, but not world-class bad. 
Oh, okay, okay. So Lisa is the one, like, there is a moment in the Revolution show when they do this super long jam of controversy that goes into all these different phases and things. And there's a point where it breaks down where they're all chanting for Lisa. She does this jazz piano solo, no beat, and it's just her. Like, my, I've got goosebumps thinking about it. I was like, oh my god, that's her. Like, you know, uh, I was all messed up emotionally watching it. Yeah. And then suddenly, oh my god, that's her. Wow. Something like if you saw Van Halen and they had uh, no lead singer, mm -hmm. it just Van Halen with higher depth. It's still kick ass because they're still kick ass band. Yeah. It's kind of like Revolution. So, it's a weird example because Van Halen's actually tried to do it without Rod. Oh, yeah. It doesn't work. Not for me. No, yeah, it doesn't. Not with the dude from Extreme, not with uh, Red Rocker. Oh, you didn't even like him with Red Rocker? I thought he was okay. Yeah, I, I did. I feel like he didn't try to do. Uh, well, I should say, yeah, I like, yeah. Yeah. I like yeah. Sammy Hagar's solo stuff yeah. better than when he was with Van Halen. Really? That's None the of the Van Halen stuff. It was stuff so you soft. Like. Yeah. It's weak stuff to me. Ooh. I, for me, I have to disagree, at least on that first album. I, I, I really fell in love with 5150. Okay, but that's I'll have me. to revisit. Yeah. Uh, if you could have any living musician besides Sting listen to your, your upcoming album, who would that be? Mm. Or dead. No, that's complicated. Okay. Um, <laughs> any living. Oh, that's a good question. Um, oh, yeah. Um, what's her name? Um, the bass player? <laughs> no. The bass player for Krung Boom. I forget. I'm trying oh, to remember I, yeah. her name right now. I forget her name. Too. Laura Lee. All right. Yeah, it would be great. I mean, considering that she's used to writing instrumental music, just being able to uh, play something with her playing you, bass, that like would be great. Me. I don't know. That'd be nice to believe that she she would, but I mean, that would be uh, she would. That would be that would be awesome to write with somebody like that. She would like it. That's cool. I appreciate hearing that. So what's funny is I shared a interview with him yeah. on Facebook. A couple days ago, yeah, and I said that you had introduced me to their music, yeah, and I find that I keep returning to music, which is true, yeah. And my friend Steve, that is diehard Prince fan, yeah, really cool dude. He tagged me in a post like he's driving around in his car listening to them, he's taking pictures of them on the car stereo. Oh, that's like cool. My friend Jay's just showing me this, I'm like, mm. just trying to spread around good music. That is a great band. I love them. Just for what they did to, for in, instrumental music. In the uh, documentary, well, I don't know if you call it documentary. It's like a short form kind of documentary interview. They explain what their name is. Yeah. You know what their name is and, and what it means? Uh, airplane and yeah, tie. tie. Yes. And that, like, the guitar player, I forget that dude's name. Um, Mark Steyer or was Steer, one of the two. All into. Uh, like you got hardcore into Middle Eastern funk. Yeah. Like that's a thing. It's like, okay, I guess it is. Yeah. And that the three of them would will know that uh, he and the drummer played together in church. Yeah. I was blown away by that. But um, All right. that makes interesting like fact. Yeah. I think definitely their history definitely turned me on to them or and made that, me appreciate them even more. That. Um, they would hang out after their services. Yeah. Just the two of them. And just go to this cafe, like what we're doing, just talk music. Yeah. And they did that for a couple of years. And then Mark met the chick bass player. Yeah. And then she came into their fold and started hanging out with them in the coffee shop too, talk about music. And I heard it was two years before they actually started playing together, hanging out, just hanging out. Yeah. So that's, yeah, maybe that's the two years. But 
that it was two years and then he hooked her up with something, some kind of uh, a band thing, not the current configuration, hooked her up with something where she, like he taught her how to play bass. Oh yeah. And then after he came off that tour, he's like, this is what I want to do. Let's form a band. And that's how the band started. So he, he was like her Yoda. Yeah. And she became the Luke Skywalker, like, yeah, let's do this. I love that she's not playing with a pick either. She started out playing with a pick. It's a whole nother discipline to playing with your mm -hmm. fingers. I mean, and um, I just love that she's doing that. What's the name of this project that you're working on? Current project? Uh -huh. uh, like I said, uh, I feel like uh, the blues rock thing was a uh, you know, kind of a great idea. Kind of gave me some, you know, uh, um, a realm to function in. But at the same time, it felt like I was going to prefabricate it. Like I was going to fabricate it, trying to <laughs> build this image. And when I know people like Aaron King around town, that's like a natural. That's a blues rock dude. He lives it, breathes it, and that's not necessarily me. And then finding that, I feel like I'm going into. Anything else? Oh, well, good. Thank you. I feel like. For me, my best way of saying it, I feel like I'm entering into the, the astral phase. And the only, space. Yes, yes, definitely. And the only way I can uh, really clarify that is when you hear these next three songs, okay. I think you'll have a clear picture of, okay, this is where this guy's going. If you could write for any director that you could think of, uh, like if you could put your music with any director you could think of, who's, do you have somebody at the top of your list? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. What's that? He just, obviously he uh, directed Sac uh, State graduate, uh, 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 directed uh, uh, Black Panther. What's that guy's name? Um, oh. I wish I knew his name. I can't think of his name. Coogler? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ryan Coogler? Yeah, yes, 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 yes. He's from Sac State? Yeah. Oh, I had no he idea. He said he's a Sac State graduate. Oh, that's cool. But I would love that he made some weird, uh, you know, sac uh, some weird indie movie and, and he actually found some of my music on YouTube. That would be a dream come true. That he thought a, a particular piece of music would be great for a scene in a movie. Or one of his, you know, films, documentary. Mmm. Drink that. Oh. Fill it up. Oh. Wow, oh. Wait, where's yours? Oh, you're Give all done. You're, you're <laughs> done. <laughs> I've been drinking hers too. Ooh. All right. No, uh, no, no, don't fill it. Sorry, <laughs> you gotta drive. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do half of it. Mmm. <laughs> what do you want? Uh, someone that's just discovering your music what do you want them to know about you um they've just found you on youtube i hope now i mean i don't think the the earlier stuff had any direction i think it was i don't want to say <laughs> a smooth jazz puke but i think it was un it was un um i don't think i had any clarity as far as my direction i think it was um just I was writing just to write because of the independence in it. I was just kind of declaring my independence. But now I think I have a clearer, defined vision. So I, I want well, them you, to be able to hear where I'm, where I'm, uh, how I, hope, I think about it. I hope you will get to the point where you realize that Alignment of Stars, like the, the project, yeah. is all good music. Yeah. It's all good music. It's not, I'm not saying it because I'm drinking yeah. or because we're friends. But I can say it from an outside perspective, it's all good music. No, I appreciate that. Mike, I remember when you first played the one song for us, we were driving down to go see Johnny Lang. San Antonio. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you played yeah. San Antonio in the car. And I was in the back seat. And <clears throat> I remember thinking, this is really good. I, I honestly thought that it was going to be like, oh, my friend made a record. Now I have to listen to it. Like that's really good, man. That's really good. I was blown away at like how professional it was and how like that it was. 
as good as anything that I was going to hear on a groovy radio station. Mm-hmm. And Still I, stays. And I kept thinking, how can I say that to him so that it doesn't sound like the friend that's like, yeah, man, that's good. You know, like yeah. the, 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 the support you give someone when they tried really hard. <laughs> Yeah. You know, because you, you gotta do. There's the support you gotta get. Like, no, man, that's really great. Good, good for you. Good for you. And it wasn't that. It was like, holy shit. Like, oh my god, I had no idea. Like, what are those? Like, this is so exciting. It was so exciting for you. And it still, I still feel that way. I also remember what I told you that I liked the melody was whimsical. Yeah. And I still feel that way. Nice. Since I have you here. Let's talk about marmalade. Oh, marmalade? Oh, okay. Let's talk about what happened with the video. Yes. You begin. Ah. Uh, what did we do? We shot the video on a on a on the fly because we had committed to a day that we were going to shoot a video. However, we were functioning on plan. Uh, I don't even know if it was B. It was probably plan C at that point. But uh, uh, whose plan was it? Uh, I think it was my plan. Yes, yes, it was my plan. Yeah. Um, and what happened? <laughs> I don't think it, in the grand scheme of things, my biggest nightmare was to avoid just seeing myself by myself on screen, yes. on camera. That was my worst nightmare come to realization. <laughs> I don't, I don't remember, know how I let that happen. I remember happen. your original concept was a street musician sitting in a chair yes. with a boxer. And a, a female drummer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Who I would hope, w- w- my my aspiration was for the, the the street boxer, street fighter, to take up the majority of the camera space. I thought he was a young, good-looking kid. I thought it would be a great opportunity to get That's him on camera. That's actually not a bad idea. Yeah. But just like. Uh, What was the alignment of stars? Yeah, alignment of stars. Yes. Where the half, half wing. Oh my god. The elf, goblin, <laughs> the leprechaun. The goblin, leprechaun. leprechaun, sidekick, backed out. Who he was actually my second choice. He wasn't even my first choice, but he, I pick him up and he flakes out. So it just shows you the variables, the, the uncontrolled. Um, circumstances that happen in shooting a video I guess when you don't have a name for yourself where people are you know kind of on the fence whether they really want to be you know in it or not not. paying them yeah the problem is I offered to pay my choice A but she was she was uh, just skeptical about being on camera but they're not professional performers yeah that's true you gotta find somebody who wants to perform who will work you need to find that's true uh, that's true yeah exactly exactly if nothing I've learned is uh my source of pool of who I um, solicit to try to be in a video will never be the same as it was before. I was soliciting That's co-workers. Why your your Sac City you know. idea is ingenious. Yeah, I think we need to do that still. You know, do that I little field trick because. Uh, I, uh, oh, let me tell you this: uh, that art show, last art show, was oh yeah, equal to the first one or oh, not okay. even close. Oh. Uh, We had better physical positioning. Yeah. With this one. Did that make you optimistic? Like, okay, this is we're better poised for a better like turnout. More traffic. You okay. Think, yeah. You think more I was traffic? Ready I don't think to, there was. I was ready to just like blow them all out. Like, yeah. I was like, I'm gonna make so much money. Yeah. It doesn't work like that okay. sometimes. And life does that. It's like, okay, take this hit. Take it. Yeah. Take it right on the chin. Take yeah. it back. Are you still standing? Yeah. Can you still take it? You want another hit? I hear you. That's what it does. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, disappointment. Mm. This is not what it's going to be. Yeah. And so that was a twofer because that was like a week after Dawn of the Day. Okay. Took yeah. one on the chin on that. It's like, oh my God, this this like dream thing. And like, who took it? Got punched in the tank. That's a combination. Yeah, definitely so. And then. I was like, okay, I can make up for that with this art show that's coming out. Yeah. No, you can't. Yeah. What was the the issue? Was it less of a turnout than I saw that first time I went? Yes. Oh. But 
a uh, different crowd. Yeah. Uh, super loud. Yeah. So where we were before, we're up high that oh. was inaccessible. Yeah. But because it was inaccessible, you could still have conversation with people. Okay. So I was hustling my ass off yeah. there and making minuscule thicket. Thicket box? Yeah, okay, thicket. Can I have one of yours? Oh, yeah, yeah, because I want to finish it. You should try this too, Mike. Yeah, you should. Oh, yeah. If you can do it. Well, Please feel a, free to kill off the rest of the The spot we were in, in theory, had more traffic. Yes. But I don't think it did because it was right in front of the stage. So people would come and stand at the stage and then it was a cul-de-sac, right? So it wasn't, people weren't flowing by. Right. Okay. They were just coming and stopping there. So it wasn't like there was a lot of free flow of traffic. It was just, and it was too loud. We couldn't even talk. And so it was very hard to talk to people. And our whole bit is trying to charm people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, we couldn't do it any of that. So it eliminated that that um, that aspect of yeah. uh, marketing. Oh, all of it. All of it was gone. Also, the hilarious thing was uh, I put my Pazuzu painting. Which one? Front and center Pazuzu from the Ooh, that's spicy. That's good. good. Okay. Pazuzu. Devil face from the uh, Exorcist. Okay, yeah, yeah. You know that face that shows up in the, the subliminal flash? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's terrifying. Yeah. So, the first show, my entire audience, all the buyers were black people. Yeah. To the point where I'm like, interesting. It's because Prince. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. And to the point where I'm standing up there, like I see a black person walk up, I'm like, come up here. Yeah. And then I've got like this, like I'm pushing. Yeah. Like, let's talk about Prince. Yeah. Pushing to try and make that $20 sale. Okay. Here there was no way to do that. Really? And the black people were afraid of the exorcist painting. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I yeah. saw some black people come by. What a we weird don't fuck stereotype. Like this. <laughs> that is a real stereotype. Yeah, yeah. Like, I yeah. do not feel bad about oh, saying yeah, that to yeah, my Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a legit stereotype. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'll be honest the, with you. Yeah, there's certain things I won't hang up in my yeah. Also that, well... <laughs> 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 I'll show you this picture. Yeah, that's, it's, that's a legit thing. And so, basically, that was kind of...
Music and Monsters. You are watching Music and Monsters. Music and Monsters, the art of Jace Whitman. Please visit www.musicandmonsters.com.